Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the chromatography technique. Chromatography technique is a very important tool for the organic chemist, for the students of forensic science and for the students of pharmacy. So this is a kind of separating technique and here in this video, we are going to discuss the brief overview about the chromatography its history, its basic principle and different type of chromatographic techniques and at the end of this video, I'll show you the experiment related to the paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography that is TLC plate. So let's start with the chromatography. Chromatography is the composition of two Greek words. First is chroma and the second one is graphos. So here chroma means color and graphos means writing. It was discovered and this term was coined by the scientist or botanist M.S. Sweat. So before moving to the chromatographic technique and its definition, first I'll give you a brief overview how it was discovered. So there was a scientist David T. Day who was a distinguished American geologist and mining engineer, he was developed a procedure for fractionating crude petroleum by passing it through fuller earth. And at the same time, a Russian botanist, M.S. Sweat, this sweat is also spelled like this, used a column packed with chaw, means calcium carbonate, to separate leaf pigments, that is cretinoids and chlorophylls, into colored bands. M.S. Sweat recognized and correctly interpreted the chromatographic process and named the phenomena chromatography. Therefore, he is generally credited with its discovery. So, the students know that discoverer of chromatography is M.S. Sweat. Now, coming to the term chromatography, what is called chromatography? So, chromatography is a general term which is applied to a variety of separation techniques based on partitioning or distribution of sample or we can say salute between a mobile phase or a stationary. So, chromatography is having two different components. One is a stationary phase and the other one is mobile phase. Stationary as well as mobile phase further categorize into two different types. First is liquid and solid. So, stationary phase can be of liquid or solid. If it is liquid, then it is supported by some inert solid. Mobile phase can be of two type again. One is liquid and the other one is gas. Therefore, this chromatography may be defined as chromatography is a method of separating a mixture into its components through equilibrium distribution of each solute between solid and liquid phases. Now, it is fine, it's a separating technique to separate the components, but it is based on the equilibrium distribution of solute between solid and liquid phase. How we are going to understand this? So, this term can be understood by considering the partition coefficient. So, what is that? The solute partitions or distributes itself between two phases and when equilibrium has been reached, the partition coefficient Kd is a constant. So, I'll give you an example. Here, I'll show you this also. Suppose we are having a separating funnel and in this separating funnel, I have taken two different solvents which are immiscible in each other. And to this system, uh, if we are adding some solute and we will shake it thoroughly and leave it for a while, then that solute distributes itself between these two layers. So, it is shown over here. Suppose it is the water layer and it is the octanol layer and solute is X0 and it distributes itself between these two layers and there was established an equilibrium. You are very much familiar with one example that is iodine distributes itself in carbon tetrachloride and water. So, here iodine distributes itself in 
water and carbon tetrachloride how it looks like so it looks like this and once the equilibrium established between these two then partitioning coefficient can be calculated by the concentration of iodine in phase 1 say this is the phase 1 concentration of solute or iodine in phase 2 say this is the phase 2 once the equilibrium is established then this term will be the constant term whether we change the concentration of iodine or volume of the solvent so this is called partitioning coefficient and this partitioning coefficient is used in the chromatographic technique therefore the term chromatography may be viewed as a series of equilibriums between the mobile and stationary phase the relative interaction of solute within these two phases is described by the partition or distribution so how we are going to understand this i'll just describe this in detail in the next slide so here we are having this partitioning or distribution coefficient that is equal to concentration of solute in the stationary phase divided by concentration of solute in the mobile phase so for selection of chromatographic system it is important to know the physical characteristics of the solute once we know the physical characteristics of the solute then then it would be possible for us to interpret up to certain extent the separation method so different type of separation methods i have summarized here on the physical characteristics of the solute so if we know the nature of the solute suppose if our solute is volatile in nature then we simply go for the gas chromatography this gas chromatography is used only for the volatile solute and it is of two different types based on its stationary phase so if stationary phase is solid then it is called as gas solid chromatography and if the stationary phase is liquid which is supported on some inert solid then that is termed as gas liquid chromatography if we are going to work on the critical temperature and critical pressure then that is termed as supercritical fluid chromatography and here this supercritical fluid works as mobile phase so what is called supercritical fluid here is no more liquid only vaporized phases available if our solute is non volatile in nature then we will go for the liquid chromatography liquid chromatography is further divided into different types if there is a difference in molecular size of the solute having different solutes then we should go with the molecular exclusion chromatography if our solute is of biological specificity then we will go with the affinity system or affinity chromatography here special type of ligands are used which interact with the biological specificity solute and they will separate the component of the mixture if our solute is highly ionic then we will go for ion exchange chromatography and in this ion exchange chromatography here ion exchange resin works as a stationary phase and the liquid serves as mobile phase in this the mechanism or the principle is ion exchange if we are having different type of functional groups in the solute then we will go with the adsorption spectroscope so the term adsorption means there is physical adsorption on the stationary phase and these adsorbed molecules will be moved by the mobile phase which is liquid so here adsorption is the mechanism stationary phase is a solid and mobile phase is a liquid if we are having homologous series then we will go with the partition so what is called partitioning liquid liquid partition of solute in two different layers of solvents here stationary phase is liquid as well as our mobile phase is liquid this partitioning 
or liquid chromatography is further divided into normal phase partitioning chromatography and reverse phase partitioning chromatography. So what is called normal phase and what is called reverse phase? Here normal phase means if we are having the stationary phase and that stationary phase is more polar than the mobile phase. Stationary phase is more polar than the mobile phase then that is called normal phase partitioning chromatograph. If our stationary phase is non-polar and mobile phase is polar then that is called reverse phase chromatograph. The example of this partitioning chromatography and normal phase is paper chromatograph. So I am going to show you all such things in the later slides. Please do not get worried at this moment. Now the example of adsorption chromatography in which solid serves as stationary phase and liquid serves as mobile phase is the TLC or thin layer chromatograph. So here I will elaborate this flowchart for your information so you can write down in your or you can take a screenshot of this. Now coming to techniques of chromatography based on. So technique of chromatography based on I will show you in the experimental view. So the mixture is spotted priorly on the lower part of the paper that is Wattman filter paper in this case and that paper is soaked into the solvent chamber. Now we are going to load the solute. Solute is red and blue marker ink. So on the paper I have loaded this. This is the solvent which is methanol is to chloroform in 9 is to 1 ratio. This solvent serves as mobile field and this solvent travels upward through the Wattman filter paper or we can say stationary phase by means of capillary action and this solvent serves as driving force for the migration of solute. And now I am going to dip this filter paper in this solvent chamber. This is also known as developing chamber. So this solvent should be below this origin line. Now you can see the solvent is moving upwards as capillary action. And this carries solute upward side. Now the question is that why this solute do not move along with the solvent as the solvent moves the distance. So that lagging behind the solute and solvent is the affinity of solute in the stationary phase which provides a resisting force for its motion. So that is why our solute is moving little lesser as compared to the solvent. And this kinetic molecular motion continuously exchange solute molecules between the two phases in stationary as well as in mobile phase. During this procedure, it also derives the mixture upward with different flow rates across the stationary phase depending on their partition coefficient. So depending on the information of the partition coefficient, one can understand the different flow rates. So this different flow rate also depends on several factors like polarity of the material, solid phase and the solvent. For example, if my Stationary phase is more polar as in case of paper. If my solute is more polar, then it will spend more time on the stationary phase which is polar. And if my solute is non-polar, then it will move along with the solvent. So there are several factors on which this flow rate also depends. So if solute will retain for a longer time or spend longer, longer time, in the stationary phase then that is called its retention time and based on that retention time the separation of analyte is achieved. So the term retention time what is that? So here I am going to describe that uh, term retention factor. It is represented by RF and it is related to the 
migration of solute front relative to the solvent front. And it is represented by this formula. So, retention factor is equal to distance moved by the solute, that is ds, divided by distance moved by the solvent. Here, this is the dm, that is the distance moved by the solute. Now, coming to the solvent. So, our solvent moved up to this line. The distance from baseline to the solvent front is represented by ds and it is the distance traveled by the solvent. Now here dm is 3.8 cm and ds is 6.0 cm. We can calculate the retention factor. So rf is rf is the ratio of 3.8 to right? And different solutes move different distance and on basis of that retention factor, the mixture of the solute can be achieved. And to achieve the separation, the difference in the retention factor of the solute must be minimum 0 0.5. This retention factor depends on the several parameters like here I have uh, just summarized the points. It depends on the temperature. It depends on the solvent employed. It depends on the nature of the mixture and type of medium used for the separation. For example, we are using paper in the in case of paper chromatography. Size of the vessel in which operation is carried out, amount of the solvent, and this retention factor is a constant for a given substance if we keep the conditions for chromatography system constant like if the temperature is constant, if the solvent employed is fixed, if the medium used for the separation, we are not changing the stationary phase and if the size of the vessel in which the operation is carried out because here we are having the equilibrium between the solvent and its vapor that also facilitates this upward motion of the solute in the stationary as well as duration and direction of the development like it is the ascending or descending chromatography case of ascending and descending chromatography direction is important and duration is also important so RF for a given solute is constant if we keep all such parameters only then we can compare the previous data for our difference. Layer chromatography will be discussed later and I hope guys you understand the concept which we have discussed here. Thanks for watching.